it's time for me to talk to you guys about this. See, I was trying to explain my little theory to, to like, a bunch of my friends. But one person didn't want to hear it because she said I was giving her spoilers. So, I just thought, eh, I'm going to dump it here and you guys can see for yourselves. See, okay, now I got this idea. Because, you know, it, uh, this idea is a little, probably a little out there, but it kind of makes sense. Now, we all know that, we all know that, like, the Dark World is basically, the Dark World is created by a Dark Fountain. The Dark Fountains are basically being made by Chris. I think he made the first one, but we never, he made, like, the first one. And probably the second one. But I'm not sure about this. But what I'm saying is that maybe, just maybe, Ralsei is like his... You know how in Homestuck... Now, for those of you that don't know Homestuck, let me... For those of you that don't know Homestuck, I'm about to get into it. But I'm starting to think that Ralsei is a splinter of Chris's mind. Now, if you, if you don't know what Homestuck is, see, see, Jake can make a little splinter of, of, you know, of Dirk, because he knows Dirk so well, so he can actually make an, he can make an actual duplicate, he can make an actual duplicate that he can talk to with his brain. So, and I've noticed when, like, when, um, I noticed that Chris and Noel have both, you know, very fond memories of Asriel. Very fond memories of Asriel, right? And it's obvious by certain dialogue that Chris misses Asriel. And, you know, since they're not really, and I'm not even going to get into the fact that they're probably not, you know, since they're not blood related, Chris probably has all this, yeah, let's just say love for Azriel. But I'm not here to talk about that. I think he he knows Azriel so well. He made like a little splinter. Kind of like a tulpa, for those of you that don't know. I should just went in with that tulpa, the tulpa thing. Anyways. People saying like Rouse is like being weird, like he, like he knows more than what he's letting on, and I'm like, no, I think because Chris, since he is like, a, since he's a splinter of Chris's mind, he's just an extension of Chris, kind of like a stand. Another thing I could have said, shit. Okay, okay, but here's the thing. Here is the thing that I'm trying to that I'm trying to put down for you. So what I'm trying to say here is that maybe maybe Rossi is a piece of of Chris's mind. And you're probably like, Bugsy, like, okay, if that's true, why why is why you think why is it that you think this because Rouse grew a because Rouse I because Rouse kind of grew a pair because of like Susie but I also think it's because of Chris you know like again Chris, like I think Rouse is the part of a part the part of Chris's mind that still sees Asriel as how he used to see him. Even though he was probably significantly older than Chris. But he sees him. He, he see, his image of him is what Rousey is. Ergo. He didn't get all. Ergo if you go the snow grave route. He's like expecting some stuff to happen with Susie, but he don't. We don't get to see it. 
it has these off screen. Meaning, if Chris has been doing a pet, if Chris is a pacifist because, you know, he totally, like, made, like, we, uh, you, the player, totally make her do the thing, we're not linked with her, in a sense. And you're probably wondering, well, why do you, why do you say, why do you say that this is, has to do with Rattlesnake? Because Rattlesnake was expecting to see something. I think when we take control, we kind of take control of Susie, somehow Chris and the other, somehow Chris and Rattlesnake are able to see this. But the Snowgrave group kind of says, oh, you kind of, you fucked with Noelle, right? You ain't gonna see this. You gotta see this little nice moment. You have no control. So, basically what I'm trying to say is that maybe and maybe we're all saying no. The player has, that we, as the player, have control over Chris. Now what that actually means, it could be a number of things. I'll say it could pull a reverse smiley for all we know. Which I'm thinking I'm thinking she might turn into a flower or something. Yeah, I don't know. May just to her, may just be like a little a little callback to Undertale. Who knows? But again I think because Chris only knows like, Rousey only knows the stuff that Chris already knows. Because we don't really know how long the, the, we don't know how long. We know the, we know that the human soul that we are in the game that is controlling Chris, right? We know that we get to control him. And they have to start a game with this will be controlling. But what if it was longer? <sighs> Hear me out. What if at some point, maybe when Azrael leaves, the human soul is always kind of there? Because that bird cage looks like Chris has done that before when he's like sleep. He's like, nah, I don't want you to control me during the night because I have the, because I want to be in control. But also notice that when Chris tries to get control of himself, it's like he's a zombie. Is it because we exert so much control over Chris, Chris can't control his own body, which... And those parts, we're not even really controlling him at that point. And I don't feel his sense of Chris trying to be like, no, I must gain control and control my body. He's cool with us controlling him for certain parts. But it's really starting to really creep in that maybe Chris may have some nefarious intent of his own. Or maybe every time he's in the dark world, he gets slowly corrupted. Not by us, but by someone else. But everybody thinks that Rousey is evil because he's, you know, he's a little bit more assertive and something is a little bit more off with him. He's a lot more of this. Well, he's been hanging out with Susie, so. I don't really think, I mean, again, I don't really think Ross is, is truly malicious. Because I think, you know, the whole him trying to get everybody into Castle Town, think about it. Before Chris and Susie showed up, he was pretty, like, there's only a few people in his kingdom, and he was pretty fucking lonely. I mean, wouldn't you want to recruit more people to your freaking town so you wouldn't be lonely? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say 
that him closing up the dark, the Found Dark Dead thing, but some dark fountains have to be closed or, you know, freaking tenants are going to come. So certain dark fountains got to be closed. Not all of them because the, you know, not all of them, just some because Castletown's still up. So certain fountains need to be closed. But that could also be a lie. But from what I gather, I still think Gaster or whoever the, whoever the fuck Mike is, because Phantom was talking about Mike and how he's, now how he shouldn't listen to him and he's a criminal, I tell you, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and Hyper Void blocked. So, I don't really know. I don't really know about Mike so much. Maybe that's who we're gonna see. Um, maybe that's who we're gonna see in the TV because we're gonna like the next like Ghost Room Chapter Three might deal with something like we're going inside a TV, and think about it. The dude's name is Mike, and you know Willy Wonka. You know Mike TV, the little kid, the kid that got shrunk down, and he went inside a TV. To me, that ain't a coincidence. That, I feel, was deliberate. And I didn't fight pacifist Spanton, but maybe, just maybe, I'm on something here. If we're all saying it proves, it proves to be evil, we'll see it. But right now, there's still, there's like really not enough evidence for me to just say, oh yeah, Rousey's evil, uh, this is totally what's going on. Um, you know, there's not enough evidence for me to say one way or the other conclusively that Rousey is evil. Maybe he does have his agendas, but I don't think he's like truly evil. But you're probably wondering... When he says Chris is okay. Now, I was kind of wondering that myself. But some people are like, no, he wants Chris to be okay. So, so you know, he wants him to keep going and doing this. I think Ralph Sage just wants Chris to, I think Ralph Sage wants Chris to be okay, but not for some malicious reasons. He's just kind of, he was concerned. It may not look like he was. and I could possibly eat my words the next few chapters. Because I hear the other chapters are going to come out like three at a time. Like three of them are going to come out all together from what I heard. Which means we're going to be taking a little, we're going to be taking more trips into the dark, to the dark world. But... Until I see something conclusive that seems that Rousey is a little off or something like that. Because the whole butler thing isn't the whole butler thing and like, you know, Rousey saying Chris is okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see it. So, yeah. But I do think he's a splinter of Chris. He's like, he's like Chris's ideal image of Rousey. And, you know, because they ain't related, you know, I think Chris, uh, I think Chris want to get down with Asriel, but that, that is kind of easily proven. Granted, with some of the things I saw. Some people were like, I hope not, but I'm like, hmm, Chris is obviously there's an Easter egg where Chris where Chris has a memory of him closing his eyes while going into going into like um, probably there's something about going into a room and seeing covering his eyes because Azrael's there making me think that uh, Chris misses misses Azrael a little bit more enough to make an ideal version of him where he's just as Chris remembers. The funny thing about making the funny thing about making Splinter like this, I think 
or I'll say does have agency. And what would be better for him to constantly be with Chris forever? For them to constantly go on adventures. For them to constantly have something to fight. For for Ralph to constantly have more people in his castle town. Maybe the agenda is having more people around and having Chris around. Now, I'm just saying... Those are the two agendas I can literally think that Raul Say is up to. I don't think he's really up to what we really think he's the the militia shit that people have been saying. But I do believe they does have his own agenda. But only because he wants to be with Chris forever and ever. And nothing's gonna stop him. But 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 this is only my theory. Don't really under, don't really think it's anything but that. I don't think it's any of those other two. Or trust me, maybe maybe gonna be maybe will pull a flower and be like, oh, we got all these freaking we got all these freaking darkness here. We got all these freaking darkness here, right? We going. We we're going. I'm gonna take all of them and use their power. Maybe that can happen too. But I do think it's highly unlikely until we see some actual proof. My whole case on Rousey, it's inconclusive. As we look at more chapters, maybe we'll find some more stuff. But you know, in the comments below, tell me what tell me what you think I missed. All right, is Rouse is Rousey a good boy or is he a dirty, 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 dirty goat? And I don't mean that as a double entendre, but once in my fucking life. Or as a dirty joke, I'm just saying. I'm just saying for right now, it's very inconclusive for me if I think that Raul Say is up to something. The two things I think he has on his agenda, yeah. Because it doesn't seem like Raul Say is shooting higher than just getting more people and wanting to be with Chris because that's what Chris would want Raul, that's what Chris would want Azrael to do, to be with him forever. See what I'm saying? Very, very, very deep mentally. I'm not saying I'm a psychiatrist. I'm just a little observant. And knowing the fact that Brawl Say isn't like a physical body and just a thing of clothes makes me think. It just makes me think. Click. I shall see you all later.